War has broken out across Europe, and at home at halfway there, the rural community just outside Harbourview, a poll hangs over Christmas 1914. A poll by the name of Reverend Gaumont. A month has passed since the Reverend's son Nathaniel agreed to assist newsman Tom Dawson and lilac expert Henry Pembroke in exposing the Reverend's true identity as one of Harbourview's most notorious racketeers. A folio's worth of evidence has been compiled, and for the Reverend Gaumont, it forms a loaded gun. Leaving only one question, will the gun go off for Christmas? Annex, the continuing story of a peculiar bend in the avenue. Traffic goes north, traffic goes south, the streetcar runs between, and all we can do is try to keep up. No tree yet, Hank? No tree here, not yet at least. We're unsure, both Jane and I. I'm preoccupied and Jane's melancholy despite her best efforts. Sophie's gone and Diana's husband is ill and they're unable to travel here for Christmas Day. Our first Christmas here at the Lilac Sanctuary. Yours here on Delaney Road as well. Such high hopes for our families. Such sadness for our families. How are you and young Nancy faring across the street? We're managing. This is the time of year where we both miss Nancy's mother the most. Elizabeth always worked so hard to make Christmas special for us. We need her the most this year. Nancy does, and so do I. Maybe best to let Christmas pass us by this year. Oh, what's this talk? Letting Christmas pass us by? Oh, shame on you, Henry Pembroke. We shall make Christmas if it takes the three of us and Nancy too. Jane, darling, you seem rather hastily restored to action. You feel quite all right? Boss, I remind you that when we were first married and we had nothing else to our name, we had one another. Hmm? We had one another and we had Christmas. And we'll have it this year too, all else aside. Merry Christmas, Jane. <laughs> Yours is the winning spirit. Bless you, Jane Pembroke. Is that a tray of hot chocolate you bring now? <laughs> Indeed it is, with something extra to steal our nerves. It's the least that we can do. Make merry light together despite the dark. Oh, so many are in darkness this Christmas. So many young men. They could be our sons. And so many parents over there will lose their boys as we lost our child this year. I say a prayer for them. As do I. And I. Now, let's have updates on this investigation of yours. Come out with it. Where do things stand? I'm more aware of it. Let's not prevaricate. Update. Jane, Tom and I, with Nathaniel Gaumont's invaluable assistance, have amassed quite the folio of evidence against the Reverend Gaumont and his numerous criminal activities. It's rather voluminous as the weeks unfurl. Mm, well, I'll have a look at it. We'll get it organised. It'll need to be gone through and made straight before we take it to the law. Jane, I'm not entirely sure... I am sure. And that decides it. I intend to be part of this mission, after the old spiders persecuted my family, and tried to drive us from our home, and may very well have killed our daughter. It was this that was foretold by my premonition last spring. Jane, I swear to you that I have brought you to the safest place of which I know. This bend in the road holds only glad tidings for us. What I fear is no face, no name, no body. It simply is. I've lost one member of my family to this reverend's wrath, and I'll be damned if he takes another. Ah. So now Jane Pembroke has joined the mob forming against the Reverend Gaumont. She joins husband Henry, neighbour Tom Dawson and Nathaniel Gaumont. Speaking of Nathaniel, he has returned home yet again to halfway there, bearing another surprise for his father, the Reverend. Last time it was lilacs. This time it's Lila. Ah, 
I'm left to wonder. You'll wonder until the day you leave this earth, Tom Dawson. Ah, oh, that's true enough. Specifically, I wonder about the long term. What's the Reverend's long term plan? For Harborview, for halfway there, for us. For those here long after I've turned to dust. <laughs> that you ask those questions, Thomas, is why these people in this city are so favored to have you run in a newspaper like The Looking Glass. Long term? The man is 80 years old. He's hardly planned out through 1980. He can't live forever, and Nate won't want anything to do with it. May I remind you both that halfway there is to be incorporated by Arborview in the new year. The old reverend lived long enough to bring that city out here to spread itself to envelop halfway there and other little bends in the road. We'll be city soon, and property values and development will respond in kind. Our little hamlet is about to change overnight into a streetcar suburb. You bet yourself that the Reverend or his organization has a plan. You bet yourself. The Reverend's death won't cease the menace to our city. He's sure to have Confederates in place. Uh, it could take years to uncover them. We have to move quickly, then, to nab the old man without any tricks. Now, my contact at the DA's office, we can trust him. That folio tying Gaumont to Harborview's crime world promises the Reverend before a grand jury and indictments in the new year 1915. I'm as anxious as either of you to go ahead and turn this over, but Nate did ask me to wait until he returned to town and spoke to me. What took him out of town, I don't know. He was mysterious as hell about it. He insisted. Anyway, he's to return tonight. And then we roast the Reverend. <laughs> Here's to that. Come to think of it, Lila went out of town, too. Asked for time off. Makes me wonder myself. There you go, wondering, Pembroke. <laughs> you know, I, I suspect if Nate and Lila are off as I think, the Reverend may save the taxpayers of Arborview the trouble and blow his top for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> A miracle for the season of miracles. <laughs> oh, in the spirit of miracles and hope, Tom, you go fetch Nancy. We need her. She needs us. What she doesn't need is to be alone in that house with her fears. She's among our neighbours and friends, and she's wanted here. Please tell her that. Glad to, Jane. I'll return shortly and see myself out. Take care crossing, Tom. The time has come. Henry, you and I, before Tom and Nancy return... The last few months, I've, I've been in another place, a nightmare state, and I couldn't awaken. Losing Sophie was the end of my world. And you stood by me at my worst. Not your worst. My worst. I've, I couldn't see straight for grief. I couldn't see you or Diana, but now I do. And that's my Christmas gift this year. Hope in the bleakness of grief and the death that surrounds us here and, and abroad. Hope is the embrace of life in all its mysteries. Hope for a strong lilac showing in 1915. Then we mean to stay, Jane. Hear it halfway there. You stand by me, and I stand by you. For now, let's stand together with our neighbour and let's get the bastard that killed our daughter, Sophie. And God bless us, everyone. That'll, That'll take, take some, some getting, getting used, used to. to. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Pembroke residence? Ah, Nate, there you are. Will you be by tonight? Is everything quite all right? The doctor? I see. That sounds dire. How did it happen? Hmm. I understand. Nate, come by or use this contraption if you need anything from a friend and neighbor. A Merry Christmas and congratulations to you and Lila both. 
We'll have a celebration soon enough, and the rest, we'll see how it develops and go from there. Indeed. Goodbye. So what's happened now, Henry? Well, that was Nate. He can't come see us this evening. Why not? What's wrong with him? He's married. He and Lila eloped yesterday. Oh, well, bless me. That is good news amid all the bad. When he and his bride arrived home, they encountered the reverend, who had spent much time stoking his rage at his son, and when he learned that Lila Shore is now Lila Gomon, well, the old man didn't take it well. A <laughs> foul language, I'm sure. The worst. They argued. The reverend insulted Lila. Nate defended his wife. They struggled. And, and Nate Gomon killed his father in a struggle. <laughs> No, but the Reverend had another attack and nearly died on the spot. The doctor is there now, and it looks unlikely for the old devil this time. Oh, Tom won't like this. Don't mention it to him, or in front of Nancy, not this evening at least. Tom will know soon enough. I'll break it to him. Henry, could this be some sort of trick? Not likely. Not this time. The Reverend, it seems, is dying. Who will rise to power? Who will be a widow? Will Sophie be avenged? Who will breathe his or her last as 1915 dawns on Delaney? Next week, the season finale of Annex. Annex.